Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Evie Darrell coming with you. So today, as it says in the title, uh, we're going to debunk two electric vehicle myths that are out there. Okay. So I have a lot of commenters that comment to me like, oh, what are you going to do when your battery blows up or your battery isn't any good anymore. They cost a million dollars to replace, you know, the just no common sense type stuff. Um, but let's get, let's get some stuff straight. Okay. Um, to debunk myth number one, yes, electric vehicles, batteries are the most expensive part. Okay. Just like with a gas car, your engine and transmission or powertrain are the most expensive part of your car. No difference. Okay. So currently EV batteries can cost for like the bolt through General Motors. If I had to replace one and pay for it myself, uh, would be about possibly $10,000. They're not they're not a million dollars. They're not, you know, my car only costs 25,000. So they're not, but they are the most expensive part. Now, I don't like to work in hy hypotheticals, but everything I have read, the cost per kilowatt has been coming down year after year after year after year after production um, is getting better on batteries, getting better and better and better. So the prediction is in five years, within within five years, the cost per kilowatt of a new battery should be down to $35 to $40 to manufacture. I have a 65 kilowatt battery in my 2023 Chevrolet Bolt. That reduces the cost to 2,500 bucks. Now, in five years, I don't know if they'll say, oops, it wasn't so cheap. It's still more expensive. I don't know. I'm just going by what battery manufacturers are estimating. So if in fact, in five more years, the cost to replace a battery is 2,500 bucks, that's cheaper than replacing an engine and transmission in a gas car. So to go along with that, I have people ask me all the time, on the street, wherever, boy, do you think after the warranty's up, and what happens? Is, is that it, battery dead? And I say, so say your powertrain has a 50,000 mile warranty or, or a really good 100,000 mile warranty. Do you expect at 101,000 miles that your engine and transmission is gonna blow up? No. They look at me like, well, well no, mine, but mine's a gas car. Same thing with a battery car, okay? Now, we're going to have degradation, but the same thing with your car is not going to be like, when you have 100,000 miles on your car, most of them don't run like a brand new car. Some do, and I'm hoping after 100,000 miles on the battery that mine runs like a new car. But I have currently, through General Motors, a 100,000-mile warranty on the powertrain of my car, the battery and the electric motor that runs the car. 100,000 miles. So if I have 99,500 and the electric motor goes out or the battery goes bad, I'll replace it for free, nothing. So I'm not concerned about that. Now, I've only got 33,000 miles on the car too, but it's an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty either or, whichever comes first. And for me, as a part-time Uber driver, uh, the 100,000 miles is going to come first. But is it a concern to me? No. Uh, I'll know if for some reason I've lost, uh, I have had battery degradation and I've lost some mileage. I'll know at 100,000 miles, but I'm not expecting anything. All the research I've done and the reviews I've seen of people that have driven them 150, 200,000, no issues. So no, no big deal. 
okay? It becomes a it becomes a moot point. When I was looking at that, I was like, well, every time I switch it around to somebody about, well, what about your gas car? They're like, well, no, 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 no. I'm not worried about mine blowing up. Yeah, I, I, the warranty was a 50,000 mile powertrain, but it's fine. I mean, I, I'm not expecting it to blow. Okay, well, me neither. I don't know that because there hasn't been enough research. There are a lot of cars. I've seen some Teslas out there with 250, 350, 400,000 miles on them. Now, have they had their batteries replaced? Possibly. Um, I doubt that I would ever take mine in if I get 200,000 miles out of my Bolt. I don't think, and then say in five years, I take it in and they say, well, it's going to be 2,500 bucks and we'll put a new battery in your car. I, I doubt I would do that. I'll probably move on to what's new after 200,000 miles or more efficient or whatever. But I don't know. If the rest of the car is in great shape, who knows? So I just wanted to debunk that. I don't know if fake news keeps throwing things out that, oh, boy, batteries cost, you know, my gosh, they're terrible. And what are you going to do? They're astronomically priced. And what they are very expensive. But very, very, very few cars need a battery replacement. Now, Tesla keeps statistics out of this world. I mean, they are, they are, well, they're a computer company who makes cars. They have more statistics than anybody hands down. But General Motors, when I tried to research the amount of the new batteries since they've been putting them in, they did a battery recall the older batteries from 2017, 18, 19, and 20. They've done a recall. They've got a new battery system. And those, well, they don't have any stats on replacing those because they've only been putting them in the cars now for a couple, three years. So most people don't have, you know, 150,000 miles already on the old battery. The, the new battery, let's say that. So, um, so that, to me... You know, we could go on Mythbusters and it's debunked. So number two, which I hear more and more and more about, which really kind of confuses me, the electric grid. We can't handle electric cars. They can't, it just can't. It's, it's terrible. It's miserable. The electric grid, we can't do it. It's not possible. Uh, we have to rebuild the entire electric grid in the United States or it's over with. World is done as we know it. Okay. Simmer down. First of all, what's happening is people are manipulating the facts. Okay. Level one and level two chargers, or 110 in your house, or a level two, an electric dryer plug, also in your house that you've already got in your house, is what you would use. 95 to 98% of the time, okay? So, when they first invented electric dryers in people's houses in the 70s or 60s or whatever, I don't remember anybody throwing a fit being like, oh, I can't charge, oh my word, if I do a few loads of laundry, my, I, it's gonna crash the electric grid. Maybe it did, I don't know, maybe they said that in the 70s or 60s. I don't ever remember that. 95%, and this is a statistic I found, of course, it's Google, so I don't know. 95% of people with electric vehicles rarely, rarely road trip, which you have to use a level three charger for. They are commuters, they are work cars, they are less than 150 miles a day they drive which think about in your own life, how many of you drive more than 150 miles a day? So most of them drive short distances and every one of them charge in their garage at night while they're asleep. It's like doing a load of laundry. Oh, we did two loads of laundry. That's it. That's it. Very little electricity is used. Okay. So let's not go out on a limb and just get all stressed out about the world's going to end. What people did when they manipulated this was, yes, level three, supercharging, fast charging, DC fast charging, those take a lot of juice. 
And if every electric car in the United States never charged at their own house and they all had to go to an electric level three charger, yes, the grid would be pulled down. Now, when people are road tripping and what happens in California a lot right now is you have a lot of electric vehicles in California that some people have free, you know, Elon gave away a lot of free level three charging. Of course, you're going to use that. Um, that is going away. That is all going away over time. Um, there was a referral program where people got free supercharging. If you use their referral number when you bought a Tesla, you as the Tesla guy that you used his code, the guy that you his code you used, he got free another thousand free miles. Okay, those are going by, they're getting rid of all those, okay? What's going to happen and what is happening in the rest of the world, in, including California, people are doing a load of laundry at night, charging their car, okay? You got a timer set, like me. I get up at 5.45, I have mine set for 5.45 a.m. And every second or third day if I charge, at whenever it needs, I don't know, 2.30 in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, when the grid is barely being used, okay? You have to understand, the grid at five o'clock in the afternoon when you have your air conditioners on and you're doing laundry, and you're, everything is running in your house, that's when the grid is getting a lot of pull. At 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, the grid is not even being used. When I look at, I have Ameren, Illinois, is who I have as my electric company. When you look, they're giving rates as low as two cents a kilowatt or three cents a kilowatt overnight. If you would run stuff overnight, we'll just, because nobody's running stuff in the middle of the night. You're normally not doing laundry. You're normally not running your air. I mean, the air conditioners run, but not. it's cool overnight, cooler. So, of course, the rates are much cheaper. There's no pull on the grid overnight, none. So, that's why they want, if you have an EV, please charge it at night while you sleep. Do a load of laundry while you sleep is the technical term. So, to debunk this, Oh, the grid can't handle, the world is over, it's, can, it's terrible. Okay, just relax, relax. I mean, you're always going to have trolls that don't know what they're talking about. You always have that. I've come to accept them that if people are jealous and they have nothing nice to say, oh, they'll say whatever they can to make things, try to aggravate people and upset people. Well, this is what I heard. The grid is over with and brownouts and everything's going to be shut down and on. Okay. Reel it in, calm down, it'll be fine, okay? So as long as 95% of the people, which is, and it's getting more and more and more of the time that people are charging at home. Yes, if you drive to Florida, you will need to use six or seven chargers on the way to Florida from Illinois. If you travel east to west, if you road trip, so you stop in, you charge, but we're getting, even though we're getting more and more electric vehicles on the road, we're getting more and more people who are charging at home overnight when the grid is asleep anyway. There's no pull on the grid, electrical grid. So um, that was an easy thing to debunk. Once I started looking into that, I'm like, uh, this, this isn't even, I don't know where fake news keeps making stuff up to, to, to throw stuff out to do that. You know, to scare people, I guess. I don't know. If you don't want an electric car, don't buy one. If you want an electric car, don't be afraid. Don't be scared away by somebody saying, oh, I, I heard your battery is going to last a week and it's uh, going to make a brownout and it's over with. And it's OK, just let's use some common sense in the world that God gave us. OK, please, please. So. Um, those were pretty easy. I started doing the research and I was like, these are the two biggest fears that's in the world on the internet today that's being pushed. And they're literally hogwash, you know, it's, it's crazy. So please like subscribe. And if you have anything else, any other questions, please comment below and we can debunk it or we can have it be a 
if it's true, it's true. All right. Stay safe. Take care, guys.